welcome back to Spaced Out Radio's Cryptid Tales. My name is Amber Beckrude, and today we are going to be taking a lovely trip all the way back to my home territory of the Yukon, and we are going to be talking about the Fox Lake UFO sightings. And yes, I say sightings because it was more than one. Now, these sightings have been going on for as long as anybody can remember, but one of the most notable sightings actually happened back in the mid 90s. Now, Fox Lake, for those of you who don't know, is about 45 minutes outside of Whitehorse and I've driven past there a lot. When I lived in Dawson City and even just going on day trips, that is the direction we tend to go. So you go there a lot and you view a lot of things. And well, back in the mid 90s, there was one instance where UFOs were extremely, well, there. <laughs> so the main thing for this sighting was that back in that time period, um, one of the most notable things was that not one or two or three or four, or, uh, no, 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 about 30 people saw the same thing on the same night. One of the first stories happened when a woman was leaving from Whitehorse to go down to Carmax and she ended up pulling over to the side of the road because she saw something floating over Fox Lake. She watched it for quite some time as the lights were shining, it was gigantic. She said it moved from one side of the lake to the other. But what was strange about this was that it didn't make a noise. She then watched it as until it disappeared out of sight and proceeded to go on her way. Well, just up from Fox Lake is Braeburn Lodge, which is one of the most popular truck stops. I know I absolutely love going there whenever I'm traveling that road. And everybody who stopped in that day had something to say. So first, this woman saw it. Then there was tales of another man who saw it at Little Fox Lake, because it, there are two. Then a little while later, somebody else stopped by to draw a picture and describe what they saw. And every single person had the same story. Same thing, same size, same zero sound. But this UFO continued all the way up Later on to find out that over 30 people that day and into the night saw this strange aircraft from Fox Lake all the way up to Stewart Crossing. Now that is actually a pretty far distance um, by anybody's standards. So what really makes this entire situation interesting and one of the most notable cases of UFOs in the Yukon is that it still happens all the time. That's right, all the time. Like quite literally all the time. <laughs> there are UFO reports from Fox Lake and that area every single year and have been since at least the 70s. So what's going on in Fox Lake? So continuing on with this story, another sighting that was very well noted was happening or had happened in the early 2000s as well, where more people continued to say, see the same flying object over Fox Lake. So what exactly is causing all of these instances. What is so interesting to our unearthly visitors that they need to continue visiting this area? I don't know. I have never seen anything strange at Fox Lake myself, but my fiance and her cousin and their families have all witnessed and encountered something there. I could go on forever about the Fox Lake UFO mysteries, but this strange football field size of an aircraft just seems to keep coming back. And really, 
I have heard stories of weird sounds. I have heard stories of weird lights over Fox Lake, and I think that's about the only thing I've ever experienced there, was weird lights of different colors coming from across the lake higher up on the mountains. But people hunt back there, so it's hard to say if it was anything or if I actually experienced anything paranormal. I don't know. The Yukon is full of UFO mysteries, and I'm quite serious, it is full of them. There are many others in places like La Barge, up in um, the Faro area, as well as all the way up in the Tombstone Mountain Range. So, as we all know, and why Dave brought me on the show in the first place, is that the Yukon also has a vile vortex. So it has its fair share of mysteries, and UFOs are just another one to add to the pile. I want to know what you guys think about this one. Why do you think so many people witness the same thing? And people who don't know each other, there's no cell service in the Yukon, <laughs> except in towns and cities, and even in some of the towns there is nothing. So it's not like anybody was texting, and I mean it's the 90s, so nobody was texting to call ahead and be like, hey, I saw this thing. Nobody was pulling out their sat phone to be like, hey, I just saw this really weird thing. Nobody talked to each other. So it's not like there's a pre-planned thing. <laughs> and the other thing that really strikes me as odd about this is that it was over the span of hours that people saw this. It moved slowly. So it wasn't just that it was there and gone. No, no, this flying object traveled from Fox Lake all the way up to Stewart Crossing over the course of a few hours. It just hung out. Obviously it was looking for something and I really would like to know what that is because Fox Lake is probably going to be one of the things that is going to haunt me the most about living up there. If you guys want to know more stories about Fox Lake, you can definitely head on over to my channel. I did a video with my fiance's cousin um, where he explains the UFO encounters that his family had. And I also tell my fiance's story about what she experienced as a child living in the Yukon. Fox Lake will always be a mystery. And it is cited as one of Canada's most incredible UFO sightings that can't be explained. As usual, I would like to give a huge shout out to Ron Bumblefoot Thal for all of our music here on Spaced Out Radio. And of course, don't forget to check out our Space Travelers Club, head on over to the merch store, or just join us in every show that comes on every single night, except Saturdays currently but you can always revisit us on the archives here on YouTube. And don't forget to check out my social media as well as all of Spaced Out Radio social media and stay tuned and informed. We also have a couple of Facebook groups. So if you're on there, check us out. And I think that's it. What do you guys think they are looking for in the Yukon? We are most notable for being completely empty. So are they looking for somewhere to settle and inhabit or does the Yukon hold something special that we don't quite know about yet. But maybe they do. It's very, very interesting and there are a lot of questions that I wish I had answers to and I could ask about. But for now, this is what we're stuck with. Alright guys, I will see you in the next video.